Welcome back to game number four. It's still match point here as NIP picked up one game to stay alive in the series. They're going to have to do it again. They will have to do it again. I was looking at the side selection. It is going to be Giants unsurprisingly on the red side. So oh, if NIP really? want to do it again, they're going to have to overcome the same draft structure that defeated them twice in this series already. Doesn't bode well right now. So Giants you see these guys have to be fairly confident as their opponents take the stage. Giants one game could mean the difference between playing themselves in to that winner's match against Schalke, a team that they might want to get some revenge on since they're the only ones that beat them in the Challenger series and then just dropping down to that loser's match. And that would mean, of course, if it was Giants versus Schalke, that uh, we would have one new old CS team making it back into LCS. Oh, yeah. We get yeah. a guarantee of a new team. But we are not there yet. We are at game four of a best of three, which means... Well, that's, like, two, that's overtime. Best, the of, best, of three. best of five. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, you're right. That Wow, my uh, brain is not working. I was going to say that means that as LCS a 2-1 setup, um, NIP have the possibility to reverse sweep. We saw some of the fans talking about this series isn't over. The reverse sweep could be on the cards. I think that Nagne matchup is going to be the key thing, but also that Profit matchup up in the top side. Yeah, looking at what he did in game three, it was honestly nothing short of incredible. The laning was not really where we got to see him shine. It was in those fights, especially that one around the Baron. But yeah, there weren't a whole lot of them, so take your pick. Uh, but, but Profit did exactly what he needed to. Yeah, the Camille worked well. Remember, it had been banned in the previous games. Uh, actually, by NIP had banned it in one game. Giants had banned it in the other. Um, I don't necessarily think it was specifically about Camille, but it was the matchup that Camille was good into. It was a side lane threat that would have that scaling component up against the Javan that would be able to bully him around in the side lane. And I think that is what Profit did so well with. If they can get a similar setup here against Giants, we might see the same thing happen in another game. We might just, and I'm wondering if Giants decide to balance their composition a little bit more rather than going all for the all late game scaling, but because they're on a comfortable side, it feels like they can just pick the counter matchup in the mid once again, and I'm wondering if that will be enough for them. Yeah, we'll wonder whether that will be enough. It looks like we are heading towards pick and ban. Game four, hatch 7.16. We've had a, a quite a different meta over the first two days of play on 7.16. Yeah, it has definitely changed things quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, but one thing that hasn't changed is this ban setup. Casio and then the NAR follows through, as we saw it last time around, and the Alistar on the Giants' side. Yeah, Alistar taken away in every game so far. Um, at this point, we have to look at the adaptations. Cassio was taken away in the last game. Nah, this is the second game it's been banned in as well. <laughs> I like <laughs> the Nah to take away from Ruin, yeah, at least because Shook on that full AP Elise just did a great job of actually providing AP damage into the mix, whereas uh, it looked like there may have been only AD threats as we were going later. Yeah. Well, they didn't really need to worry about it going too much later. Now the Cinder has been banned out by NIP, we'll see what Giants respond with. It will be another support pickup against Sproutle. The Thresh has been banned pretty consistently. Looking at what else is there, the Talia could be another ban out of Giants. Remember that was banned on the games that they were on red side before. That's Callista. Ah. Okay, interesting. So this is Giants not wanting to buy into the Caitlyn Callista matchup again. It was one that NIP picked in game one for themselves. Now that means Tristana is there as well. Is the Thresh first pickable, though? It, well, it is first pickable, but whether NIP wants it or not. I mean, Sprattle has had a good Thresh performance this split. Oh, but they Ooh, want wow. the Lucian again. Okay, very quick pickup. Now, I'm not anticipating that to be bot lane, but it could be, of course. We have seen Lucian AD carry a couple of times, most likely mid lane for Nagne. A pushing lane, uh, one that he can assume control of. Not too many matchups can actually deny that in the early game, but that does give over Giants the ability to take the Tristana for themselves. The Thresh alongside very quickly locked in. Now, Zac is still available in this draft. We've had it available in a number of the games and not picked apart from him one. All right, well, NIP go the route of that. Shook's Elise band away once more. They're gonna have to find something a little bit different, but early priority on Nagne. They fill out their bottom lane here. Do we get themselves the jungler? We're gonna find out. Four seconds down the line, and it is going to be a Zaya. Rakan is, of course, still up, so they could combo that right now. Yeah, they could very well. They now have some later game threat 
they could also go... This would be showing all of their cards if they went like a rumble here, but they will be lacking AP if they get to the late game again. Uh, just like the last game, but they didn't get to the late game, and then IP had won it. I take the Janna instead. Okay, so they get themselves a little more disengaged. But all right, now it's Ooh, back over the Giants, and the Orianna's been left up. First game, Oriana has been available. Jazuki's most played champion in this split um, has been a very strong performance or performer on this Oriana. Gives them late game team fighting, gives them mid game team fighting as well. Good shielding that comes through. Going with the idea, three seconds, they're gonna lock it. Yep. So, where do we go now? We're looking at Oriana. Typically a matchup that Lucian does win in the early portion, gets shoved in, um, does the Oriana, but Oriana can actually compensate for that with a lot of the wave clear that she has later on. Um, but still one that Nagne should be able to take advantage of. That Zack is off the cards now, though. Yep, no longer an opportunity for Shook, of course. You know, he's kind of shown quite a large number of champions that said Shwani came out one. Obviously, they're not going to have any Sizwani Braum stuff because the Janna was locked in. I wonder if they do need a tank, though, in that jungle. Gragas up and available would be a takeaway, but for the time being, they decide to ban Camille. Yeah, Camille was that match of the Prophet. Looked very strong on into the Javan. Now, if Giants uh, are anticipating a Javan for themselves, you would think they could pick Javan as their first pick and flex it. Um, the Rumble now off the cards again, banned away, so NIP won't get that AP damage coming through. I wonder if there are any better picks here as a setup for Giants than that, Jarvan. Well, it's kind of hard to say. Ninjas, they have a chance to ban that one out. One more with 10 seconds left until it goes back into pick phase two. They focus up the top side, try to leave the champion pool in ruins. That's the answer. Yeah, too strong was the flex threat here. Gragas would be one that Gilius could run, but then, of course, runs himself into a, a slightly tougher matchup. And... Uh, it's an awkward one here at this point for Giants because you basically either pick top side and get counterpicked or get picked jungle and maybe get counterpicked. It's a little more difficult in that respect. Yeah, I think the Gragas makes a lot of sense. Gilius didn't look too bad on it the last time around and really wasn't the reason that they lost out on that game. It's been much more of a priority to just sort of have themselves a utility tank, something that they don't have to worry about uh, getting jumped on and turn the fights around if need be. Yeah, and disengage on, as well on both sides of, uh, of this. We got the Janna on one side, the Gragas on the other. You got team fighting. Sejuani would be a pick. We've seen Shook play before in this series. Needs to do more than he did that game, though. Yeah. We, we saw maybe a handful of Glacial Prisons. I want to see what Shook can get done this time around on Pig Rider. Now, one pick I don't want to see here, Devin, but would be an AP option, would be the cannon. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not no, no, a no. big fan of AP Every, Everybody the gets side. big stars in their eyes when they remember the sh the, 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 the SMEP, SMEP highlight yeah. plays. It doesn't work that well anymore. No, also, it doesn't you're not work SMEP. that well. Okay, this is the complete opposite. Here we go, yeah, the, no, that's what I want to see. Now, you do get some damage coming through, magic damage from the... Uh, uh, you know, if you end up going the Sun Viking route, but normally we've been seeing the Titanic Hydra for more, more damage and push threat. So you, of course, have the Stand United, multiple targets to proc it on or activate it on. But against the Shen, Poppy, where's Ruin going? Poppy has been one of the picks we know Ruin has played throughout a lot of his uh, career here in Europe. Gets it again. It does get it again. We'll see if he yeah. buys items. There's a lot of disengage on the giant side as well when you think about it. Yeah. Between the Gragas barrel, the Poppy Copter. But they also want to pull people in, right? They got the box. They got the Oriana. I'm wondering how this will all work out. They have it all giants, though. They have some mean late game team fights for sure. It's going to be pinball on the rift. Yeah, I'm interested to see the Shen Poppy matchup here as well. Um, Neither one is, is particularly dominant early on. I mean, Shen can do a good job of trading, but so can Poppy. It's a less, you know, carry on the side lane focus than before. In a lot of the games, we've had like the Kassadin, we've had the Camille, we've had that type of pick. Poppy can assume that role, but not as strong. It seems, looking at these compositions, that this might be what was promised before the first draft, that we would get some epic team fights a la the last day of play that we saw in the promotion tournament. Maybe this is finally the time. Game number four between the Ninjas in Pajamas and Giants. It's all on the line to try and keep your fortunes high to move themselves into the winner's matchup up against Schalke. Of course, the loser dropping down to face off against Mysterious Monkeys. It could all end here and now if Giants are able to put this one away. But perhaps the Ninjas still got a couple of smoke screens to throw down. <laughs> yeah. 
That would uh, be a quick exit, though. That's not what they want, Devin. They don't want ah. a quick exit. Because a quick exit would mean they lose the series. Well, they want to be here they, for a while. Maybe obscure the vision and then go to the Nexus. <laughs> we'll see how it happens. We've got an epic game on our hands. A lot on the line here as the Ninjas and the Giants take to the rift for the fourth time today. Let's see how it all unfolds. NIP can do a similar thing around that middle lane with the Lucian. Look towards assuming control, push it out, get themselves an attempt on the tower. Rift Herald might be even more necessary this game. Um, oh, yeah. Oriana can do a little bit better earlier on than the Victor. All right. Mini Troop Axe looking to go on a serious mission this game to victory Omega Squad, Tristana. Uh, but it definitely seems like things are going to shift up a bit. We, we talked a lot this series about profit, about ruin, about if profit can you know carry enough. This game is not going to be about that at all. Definitely keeping an eye on the mid lane and on the AD carry matchup. Once again, let's see how these fights end up getting set up. But that'll be a while away. A little bit of chatter going on on the side of the stage. NIP pulling back just a bit. The Looks Giants. like we'll be in for the big leash. Giants are quite a, a loud team. Yeah, we've stage. heard many Troopex laugh a few His times. laugh, almost like a hyena. Yeah, I, I thought point. I was watching The Lion King. It was a little scary. <laughs> Mufasa. Mini Troopex at that point. But look, <laughs> Jack Troll, <laughs> and I'm never doing that again. Jack Troll oh, and Mini Troopex boy. trying to once again assume control of the lane. This is a very interesting start here. Janna has gone up. Only Janna. EQ is still in the bottom lane. So just shield shook to try and get a little bit of uh, extra survivability through the beginning. And over the wall, Nagane is like, okay, I can give you a uh, well, piercing light and a couple of light slinger auto attacks, and it's good. So shook, of course, will be able to clear that Raptor camp a little more secure than if he was just there on his own. Gragas, on the other hand, though, very good with the Oriani, basically just kill the Raptor camp immediately. Yeah, last time around. We talked a lot about Shook having, you know, a really solid impact in this early game on the Elise. This, this is going to be a bit different. I feel like this is where Gilius can once again kind of outmatch him because last game notwithstanding, Gilius seems to have gotten the better of his counterpart uh, in terms of just how fast he's been able to clear through his jungle and be where he needs to for the team. Yeah, Gilius has more often than not found Shook on his attempts to make a play into the lanes. There were a few opportunities on that Elise game, specifically against Victor, game three, where Shook found the play in middle lane, got the flash, re-ganked, was able to uh, end up getting a flash a second time. Those were a few times that Gilius wasn't able to really match up against Shook, but I think this game should be a little different. Sejuani has a tougher time getting into the lane than the Elise. Of course, you can use that Arctic Assault, flash in to try and get a summoner down. It'll be kind of key to get Jazuki's flash as early as possible. Yeah, it's going to be hard. And he's got a lot of survivability, sustainability. Of course, running the heal as well in the mid lane uh, up against Nagne, who has a much more aggressive summoner in the form of that Ignite. Now, Shook will get some early damage out in on the Rift Scuttler be able to try and keep Vision alive as he moves into the enemy jungle. Finding nothing, though, unfortunately, so he's just going to have to play some Vision down. And Gilly is still playing towards this bottom side. Shook actually has the jump on his opponent for this game, and now he's heading up top. And another time, you can see a ward has already come through from Ruin into the Tribush. Very similar to game two here, where Ruin would be able to see Shook coming. Gilius isn't on the top side. He's about to be spotted on a ward in the bottom side if he were to path that way, but he didn't. So Gilius isn't on Vision either. But there's a lot of uh, threat towards Jazuki in the middle lane at the same time. Jazuki having the rough end of the trades as to be expected in the Lucian Oriana matchup. Yeah. I mean, after the first two games, you can't really blame NIP for trying to put as much attention as they possibly can on Jazuki. Uh, he's definitely proven the uh, the moniker of the Italian god true. Last game had a bit of a tougher time. Let's see if it ends up being the same way. Half his health is still left. And no potions have been uh, used by Nagne. And no potions in the inventory of Jazuki either. You can see Nagne still trying to push forward. Aggressive posture right now. Oh, you wanted this farm? Nah, you can't have it. <laughs> Similar thing is happening on the bottom side. You can see how Tristana and Thresh trying to move forward into this lane, trying to get a hook if they can. There's a lot of kill threat here with Gilius coming to the bottom lane if they can land that hook. Okay, Flash Flay hook is going to pull in the bird. Instant ignited. HeQ trying to run for his life. A heal comes out. And he's going to be able to stay alive, but following on the flash and the exhaust, that is a three summoner for two. 
difference. Actually, Gilius flashed as well, so that's even trade. Yeah, three for three overall. Now, Hikyu doesn't have his summoners. The key thing on that is going to be if a Jack Troll hits another hook in the lane, there is going to be a lot of damage that comes through because there's no exhaust remaining for NIP. No heal either. Speaking, so Hikyu would be under a lot of threat. Speaking of a lot of damage coming through, of course, a lot of trades with Profit and Ruin up in the top side, but you know, not so much of a wed noodle. It just isn't going to be enough damage to really finish off those kills. Meanwhile, back in the mid, Shook is going to be putting in a cameo, uh, but he dashes away before Jazuke can really do anything about it. Nagne still pushing this wave very hard. He's got to be careful because Gilius is around the corner, and Jack Troll is going to stop the back of Sprottle down on the bottom. Yeah, you can see the ward that Shook placed, just trying to track Gilius coming to the middle lane. Now Gilius is approaching from the other side here, looking for that mid lane play. Not disrespecting. Don't go too far. Jizuke, well, this isn't the first time we've seen Gilius play Bodyguard. But it's necessary because like, Nagme just hits level six, so yep. Gilius actually says, no, <laughs> stop that. Enough of that from you. And it means they can at least not have quite so much go in the way of Nagne when it comes to the push. You can see Nagne even recalling on a ward now. Giants are aware of what is going on. Jack Troll trying to set this up. Close. Yep. Not able to do it. Uh, he's going to get rooted up, but here comes Shook. Is they, uh, are they going to get baited in too far? The Arctic Assault. Going to get the slows down here. Feathers oh, flying. EQ looking for some revenge from earlier. Shook still going for the stun. He does get it, but Hikyu and Sprottle are too low to follow oh, up. Shook, he needs an auto. Oh, he can't do it. Oh, oh, they even put him under. Oh, Ooh. no. Is he overcommitted okay, here? Yes, he is coming. He's going to get the bot. No, it's dodged out. Flashing is shook. And that was anticlimactic. No kills in the bottom lane. Trade summoners were used in the previous trade, and Gilius was able to come down to the bottom side to defend. But there's still a big lead for mini true packs. And... Oh, hang on. Stand United comes through. Yeah. The Prophet is going to get the taunt off. However, He's under tower, many true packs. Is able to shrug him off for the time being. Big investment for NIP down bot. Even Nogne's coming to this party. Prophet was winning the top lane quite hard here. Almost as much as many true packs was winning the bottom lane. And that means NIP did just give up some of their lead to get that Stand United to try and make a play. It's going to delay the recalls of basically everyone. Ooh. But Giants may end up being happy with that. Of course, Prophet could teleport back to the top side if he wanted to, but actually chooses not to. It's the most exciting early game we've had so far. And back in the mid, Jizuke. He's also in a deficit against Nagne. This has been one of the more lopsided farm uh, affairs that we've seen. As you rightly mentioned, Prophet had that advantage up on Ruin, who was able to close some of the gap after the Stand United heading down to the bottom side. But we were talking about many true packs, and once again, showcasing how much of a master this guy is at farming and denying farm on the enemy side. One of the difficulties of playing th uh, playing Janna into Thresh is if you can land the hooks in the lane, which theoretically shouldn't happen, you almost give no sustain. You have a shield, that's great, but oh, Jizuki. Oh man, on himself, he decides to put out the ultimate. Jizuki's forced to heal though, and Gilius even throws in the barrel for Good measure, Nagne nearly came up with a solo kill. Yeah, that was an awkward trade out of Jizuke, but he knew that with Gilius coming, he was safe enough. They're trying to push out the middle lane. You can see Jack Troll is around as well, but down comes Prophet. This time, no ultimate, remember. He is just walking down. They're tr trying desperately at Giants to hold the mid lane as far away from the tower as they can and deny Nagne as much presence as he had in the last game. Yeah, recognizing a pretty superior threat, both. Teams doing a lot in this series to try and shut down the mid lanes, respectively. But while that's all happening, the other weapon of Giants Gaming, Mini Troopax, continuing to farm it up. And so far, that farm differential has really only resulted in a few hundred gold, but you know, you can see that HQ started to close that gap pretty significantly for the time being while Mini was away. Yeah, there was a big uh, minion wave pushing towards HQ. He was able to absorb the majority of it and yep. end up closing some of that gap, but it will be re-established while HQ is on his, on his own in the lane, in the bottom lane. It's been a, an awkwardly paced beginning of the game here. Not so slow. I mean, we don't yeah. have first blood yet. I mean, it, it's, it's a little bit different, but... At the same time, both teams trying their hardest to just make plays and get advantages in the lanes because it has been focusing on those lanes. The junglers have been more active. Uh, I say that even with the caveat that Shook was on Elise last game. Yeah, Shook was on Elise, no longer now. It's the Infernal Drake start though at Achilles, the first jungler to make their move towards an objective. And Shook had just recalled. So there's no way of them contesting this. 
But this should go over to Giants easily here. They'll move back to the lanes. It did, however, let Nagne push out and let Prophet get into the topside jungle. But the dragon has been taken. Infernal Drake for Giants. Giants seem to honestly relish the idea of trading dragons even for a little bit of tower damage. They gave up a tower up top because they knew NAP were going to have a superior movement to just take a Consolation Drake, and they don't seem too fussed about it. They don't seem to make these desperate plays when the early game happens. No, no fluster on this big stage. No, no real jitters that we saw, and we saw that as well in the earlier series from them. Where oh. Wind and Rain didn't really show up, and Giants are like, okay, we're going to 3-0. I guess, yeah, it's kind of hard to sneeze when the Wind and Rain just ain't coming down. Uh, but wouldn't want to sneeze into the wind. That, <laughs> no, would, that be, would be that would be unpleasant to say the least. Bad. But for Giants, that, that is an impressive part of this team. The fact that a team that has spent a lot of time in Challenger, yes, that is for the most part dominated Challenger, sometimes and very often we see exhibit some troubles when they finally make it to the big stage, the LCS stage, uh, and no longer playing online, playing on the LAN environment. It just has not been the case for Giants. They've been cool under fire consistently. Yeah, they have. I wonder how much of that is Gilius' uh, influence on the team. He obviously long-time LCS player and challenger player bounced up in between. Hey, man, the guy was at Worlds. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of people forget that. Yeah, of course. Came in on SK Gaming, yep. yeah. Subbed in for SK in place of Sven Skaren for a couple of games. Good experience, and you can hear Giants shouting. Yeah, shouting they're very, very vocal loud. too. Like that's the other side of it, right? Like if you're if you're a team that is making a lot of calls and being active around the map, uh, that can give you an edge a lot of the time. You, you don't want to have long periods of quiet. You can get lulled into a sense of this game's not going anywhere. And a lot of it was the direction of the fact that Giants are going to the top side. You can see now Tristana and Thresh on the way up to the top lane. Now Thresh is spotted on awards, so Prophet knows this lane swap has happened. Yep. Giants are just trying to make a play on the tower with a Tristana. They even forego clearing the ward because they're like, okay, we just need to win this race. They have not actually gotten first tower blood in the entirety of the series right now. They're looking to change that with this Tristana. Now, Prophet is trying to hold on for the time being, but Ruin, if he gets too close, could throw out the Poppycopter. Many true backs in the back. It's a three man taunt, and now Prophet might have overstepped his boundaries here. They hook him right back into the Thresh box. The monsoon will not be enough, and it's first blood for Gilius. EQ whiffs on the ultimate. And he nearly takes down Mini on the return. EQ wasn't a whiff on the ultimate. He was dodging out the poppy ult and just to make sure that EQ would survive, be able to keep the wave away from their tower. And the Monsoon was so nearly good out of Spraddle. At that point, Ruin couldn't quite get anybody away from the tower. It defends for now. And that means that look at the presence that Nagne had just put out in the middle lane. Had to flash during some of that sequence as well. A lot was used by both teams. Oh yeah, Giants trying to rush down that top tower. NIP said not today. So the net result is just going to be first blood, but NIP are the ones still with this gold lead. Oh, Mini Troopax actually took tower aggro to start this off. That's why he dropped so low and was looking to kite back. Hook landed and it looked like NIP were desperately trying to save. There was the dodge from Hiku takes to the skies. At that point, Mini Troopax, Mini Troopax again nearly dies and they save the tower and live to fight another day. Yeah, that is worth. It is definitely worth. Uh, but yeah, as you mentioned, a lot of summoners burnt. Nagne has nothing. Hikyu has nothing. Sprottles only got the exhaust. Shook and Profit flashes down. And on the giant side, you know, they burnt a lot as well, but they have a little more in the tank here. And despite the fact that they're in the gold deficit, they seem to be in a much healthier position in terms of tempo. Yep, absolutely healthier tempo. And I mean, this game, with only one kill so far is a lot because NIP are trying to react to, to Giants and they're basically almost there a lot of the times where they're just enough to, to stop Giants taking anything significant and then NIP are able to farm themselves a little bit back up. But look at the vision control on the bottom side. Yeah, play comes down, EQ pulling out the feathers once again. Gideus wants to go, but he did get pinged even without vision. NIP sense that something is up. And yeah, Jazuke has to respect this. Oh, the Glacial Prison comes down. Nogde tags his way forward. Shockwave pulls him back, trying to stay alive. But Shook tanked up the tower and got the spoils of war. And now it looks like first tower might actually be the one in the mid lane. However, Gilius is incoming. Yeah, he's also got Jack Troll and Mini Troopax in tow. He's got Shook. He's not going to throw the barrel. Hangs onto it for the time oh, being. The minion. minion taxi on the hook, and Ruin comes in, setting up the kill for Mini Troopax. Not necessarily the taxi they were looking for. The taxi's up in the LCS with Faxi. At that point, it was a bit of a stall because the hook just blocked from hitting uh, Shook. But look, Giant's now looking for the play on the tower. But once again, Nogna yeah. spends his calling charge to try and stop all of that aggression. I mean, a lot of 
plays that are almost huge, but just stop short. The net result is Giants get one more kill. They're still behind in the gold game, though. Yeah. Here was the play. And this is a play out of NIP looking for uh, Jazuki here in the middle lane. And Jazuki, even through the heel, is taken down by Nagne and Shook. Then it was Gilius coming up with Jack Troll, who is trying to bring Tristana in. They do get the kill on Shook. Look, Jack Troll's like, I'm going to hook him. Oh, hits wow, the that's, uh, that's definitely missing the forest for the trees right there. <laughs> it was stood right underneath him. Yeah. That's what they call unlucky. Yep. Thought he was past the minion, but unfortunately okay. he wasn't. Well, the, the, the dust has cleared a little bit, right? It's two to one, kills in favor of Giants, but NIP with the one that they were able to take down Jazuki with all that attention on him, definitely giving them the edge here. However, one Infernal Drake already sitting in Giants' pocket. Another one could be in the cards, as all of Giants are here waiting in this pit. Trying to do their best ninja impression, hiding. Oh, ah, you can't hide from the wards, though. <laughs> And I've been new with the Infernal Drake spawning. It was likely that Giants were trying to make a play for it. Shook actually goes in on this just because they see Tristana bottom lane. Yeah, and I feel looking to make the play. Lantern comes out. And it looks like neither team is going to be able to take down this Drake very easily. It has been aggroed. However, many true packs, he's occupied on the bottom side. Nogne's pushing in the middle. Top laners just top laning. Oh, Gilius, can they do something with Spraddle and EQ here? Oh, the box, it's down. They're going to pull them in. EQ, Spraddle, there's the Monsoon, but Mini Trupac's coming in around the side. Shen Shield coming out. Spraddle nearly going to fall. Mini jumps in, gets the reset, hops Ooh. back before the Glacial Prison completes. And Gilius hopping over the wall. EQ, that was a lot of damage. Jack Troll going down to Shook. Meanwhile, there is another fight around the pit. Jazuke tanking the calling, and it's Nagne that gets the kill. Here's Teleport a coming in. Shen no, you do not it. want that. I think Shen actually blocked it on that exchange. Either that or Ruin cancelled it. Giants trying to hold on on the bottom side Probably there. never made a trip down to that bottom, even though the shield was on. Gilius now finds himself isolated from the rest of the team, and there's nowhere for him to go with the tower <laughs> coming through. It's HeQ with the kill. And I'd be coming up with the fight win around the dragon. Remember, it was Giants that were looking for it. Giants couldn't quite hang on to it, even though Mini Troopax survived. Jack Troll, Jazuki, Gilius all got beaten to the punch there. Giants are going to lose the second Infernal Drake. That would have been such a massive factor for them heading forward in this game. Yeah, now things are going to go more the way of the ninjas as Nagne getting a last finishing shot. It's smited down, of course, by Shook. Equalizes them on Infernal Dragons. And Mini Troopax can't hop over the tornado. They're pretty tall. So I hear. I've never it's seen a, a tornado, yard. but um, pretty sure they're quite yeah, sizable. You know, what if I told you they vary in size? Wow. Well, this team fight looked to be varying back and forth between Giants and NIP. Look, so as Mini Troopax jumps in, he gets the jump reset and jumps before the animation actually hits him of the glacial prison there. And at that point, he's able to jump out and get stunned when he lands. At this point, Jazuki got beaten to the fight. Nagne knows he can just stop the culling. Oh, Ruin actually canceled <laughs> it. Okay, that's fair. Is it, wait, you go ahead, man. Prophet walks up to him, knows the fight is already over, and Ruin goes, okay, I'll stop this now. Yeah. Uh, okay. So NIP, they get the dragon. Excellent play out of them. And I feel like Jazuke, this game, has not quite been on the same page with the rest of the team. That was not the safest path to take to try and get into the fight. It was very desperation. But it's also the focus out of NIP, very similar to game three, where NIP said, okay, we're gonna draft the Lucian, we're gonna try and push in the middle lane, Shook's gonna visit a couple of times, this should be something you could handle, Nagne, and it has worked well. It's actually forced Jazuki onto a, a difficult situation now. Giants having to flash away is oh, NIP. This is getting messy. The Rift Herald doesn't even know where to go right now. He just wants to go back home. Nogne, Jazuke, he wanted some revenge. The Monsoon came out. A lot of ultimates already spent. EQ trying to fight it all. Shook getting tanked right back into many true packs. And now Giants might be able to find this fight. The Featherstorm comes out. Prophet flashing away from the rest of the team. Ruin, he's going to get a knock into the wall. And he gets the kill onto EQ. And now the hook is going to not quite connect. But Giants Gaming, they find themselves two picks. And they go on to mini true packs as well. Three, zero, and one now. They're going to take the Rift Herald and look to break through mid lane. Look at where uh, Nagne is heading, trying to just de-push mid lane, get as much wave clear through as he can before Giants can get there with the Rift Herald. That tower, remember, is very low. So NIP trying to take anything they can to just 
recover some kind of benefit from that exchange. I don't know if they're going to be able to do it. Many troop no. access here. He's got the wave clear on this Tristana. Nogne. Does he dare? I don't think so. That is a 3-0 Tristana. Yeah, and a an thresh infinity edge. that sits beside for the hook, potentially. So the exchange started on Jack Troll, who was able to use the box and flash away. But then the re-engage. Many troop packs is here alongside Jazuki. This time, Jazuki hasn't been beaten to the fight. He is actually there from the beginning. Gilius will get Lantern to the bottom side of this fight, and Shook ends up falling to mini true packs, but Jazuki was caught by the ultimate first. From there, Prophet, too low after TPing into the fight, can't quite defend Hikyu, and then NIP are on the run. Giants turn back around, get the Rift Herald, and deny the mid lane push. So at 20 minutes into the game, Giants, they've managed to take the lead in the gold game. They've got Ruin pushing around on this bottom side. Now we'll probably start to see where this Poppy is going to be doing. Still, Cleaning up on that fight, very critical on the heroic charge, and even if it's just going to be a bash battle down in the bottom, Bruin seems to be okay with it. Bruin is at the same point in itemization that they won in the game he played Poppy in. Yeah, it's a bit of a different game. <laughs> it's very uh, we different still got five game. minutes to go until we uh, actually even get to that point. Uh, but yeah, Mini, Jack Troll, Gilius, they're all around. You know, rove as this squad and clear away a lot of vision. NIP have been so flustered trying to finish this mid turret. They actually don't have a single one in this game. That's a big problem for NIP, because remember how the last game went? Um, Nagne was able to control. They were able to get side lane towers quite early on. Oh, the hook actually lands. Oh, are they going to go for it? Yes, they will. Jump on top of the Janna. It was Hop City. Mini troop axe with kill number four. The Rift Herald is live. And now NIP in full damage control mode, trying not to lose but they will on this mid turret. Giants pick up number three, and they keep on moving. They're gonna get some serious value here. Ruin even canceled Prophet's ultimate, I think, on the chase through the jungle. That's two towers from the Rift Herald, and it still survives for a small amount of damage on the inhibitor if they end up getting it to go through. EQ Featherstorm, that's going to be enough. It does get one more hit, so off of the pick on Sproddle, it turns into a massive swing for Giants. They have a 3,000 gold lead now. Yeah, NIP, Sprattle was trying to just see where this play was coming from, had the indicator right as Sprattle moves forward. He's like, oh, was trying to cancel it. Oh, but it just finished. Observers showing us just how close that was. And you can see why Sprattle put himself on the line there. The decision making to say, okay, if I can block this channel, if I can try and get the blind stop on it, maybe, maybe. They could have got it, but it w didn't quite line up for Spraddle there. Ended up dying, and that's the thing. High risk, high reward there from Spraddle. Well, you've got to do that sometimes, but unfortunately, part of the risk was giving Mini True Packs a fourth kill. Infinity Edge, Static Shiv, Azeal. This Tristana is going to be a nightmare. At this point, he's a mega True Packs. He is, he is, and he's going to get a lot of benefit from this as well, because uh, he doesn't just have one support, Pyra. Oh! That is an Arden sensor, but I didn't expect to see it that way. Yep, that's an Arden sensor on Oriana in the middle lane. Just give everybody as many Arden sensors, because of course it's a Thresh, so you weren't expecting an Arden sensor to come through on that. It was the ultimate bait. Hi, you were going to camp me in the mid and shut my damage down. I'm the support. Yeah, I'm actually just a support in this game. It was picked up after that exchange. <laughs> I wow. mean... At that point, Suzuki's just like, great, okay, I yeah. still do damage, but... Well, and it's all protect the carry, too, right? Like, obviously, Ruin can frontline this, but we haven't really talked about the Knight's Vow that Gilius has in this yep. game. So, it, it's going to be the mini show. It will. Um, I hope the price of admission isn't that much uh, more. You know, everything... No, it's free. With technology, it goes, down in price, it goes down in size and up in price when you look at... We don't even charge for subscribers, yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Um, so, let's take a reset on this one because Giants are in a great position to close this game out. A win here means Giants would be one series away from the LCS. A loss here would take us to game five. NIP would have one more chance in this series to come back and try and reverse sweep. But Giants, uh, a lot of yelling here, they're looking for shook. Oh no, and he's gonna be all shook up right now. However, they turn the attention on to Jack Troll Nogne. That is a lot of damage with Mini Troop X. Says, leave him alone. Pick on somebody your own size. Nogne, he is a flash. He was gonna be safe in that one, but they turn it right on around. And with a couple of recalls, maybe Giants dare for the Baron. 
Yeah, Mini Troopax has 1,200 gold on his person, though, and at that point, he wants to get that third item. It would be such a big damage disparity between Hikyo and Mini Troopax. Look, it's already an item between the two, thanks to the four kills Mini Troopax has gotten. This is more of the composition, as you talked about, Devin, Pyrotechnics. This Thank you. is this type of style we're expecting out of Giants Chase when it's team goes. fights with the shockwaves that will come through. That's oh, a lot of damage. Look at that. That was disgusting. And oh, they're going to go pinball. And it looks like Prophet is the one who's knocked right back into the team. And they decide maybe they don't want that fight, so they knock it over to the other side. And Jizuke and the rest of Giants are going to reset off of that fight. 25 minutes in. Continuing to roam through the jungle. This is a murder squad if I've ever seen one. Yeah, no wizards here, but I'm pretty sure you can say Gilius. He sure plays a mean pinball if he can hit another one of these ultimates from the Gragas. Oh, Shook, careful. The same thing's happening again. Oh, no, the wall bang, and now they're going to have Mini Troopax hopping over. That is not the wall you want to be near an IP, and Mini Troopax is unstoppable this game. And without that smite on, guess what time it is, Stress? It's Baron time. Absolutely. Maybe winter has come. Shook was at the wrong wall, was trying to defend yeah. because Giants right now. He's always a little cold there. The onslaught. You don't want to see those Giants because these Giants are looking very dominating. And they're going to pull Prophet in, turning away from the Baron. It was all just the bait to look for the fight. The Shockwave pulls back one, but that is all Ruin needed to finish the fight. Nagme is caught up, and the Giants will not be stopped. Right back to Baron business. Three kills for Giants. They take the Baron from this and end. NIP with their backs against the walls now must find some way to get back into this game or they will face Mysterious Monkeys next week. But it's all about Giants coming into this series. Everybody was favoring NIP after the win against Fnatic, but Giants have proved they have been able to undo NIP. They have found ways to make the fights work for themselves. Even though Spraddle tries to get the block there, Hiku he still ends up getting caught, ends up stunned. Giants are able to just walk through the rest of the fight, and Giants get the Baron for themselves. So now at Giants Gaming, they've come up with even more. They found themselves with a 6,000 plus gold lead in this game, and NIP on the ropes. Their hopes of staying alive in the European LCS might very well just revolve around beating the Mysterious Monkeys. Now Giants marching down the mid lane. You can hear once again how vocal this team is when they get excited. Consistent communication and a whole lot of noise. You can see the Giants aren't running the 1-3-1, one, one, but here's the lockdown. down. It's a hop up, Mini Troopax, he's able to get out of harm's way. Quick reaction on the rocket jump. Jizuke wasn't even there now, so it's a key ultimate spent by Shook. Yeah, every time Mini Troopax has just barely been able to input that jump so that it only locks him down afterwards. Mini Troopax not getting caught out initially. Shook has been looking for the ultimates. That's got to be frustrating. The, the ultimates keep connecting, but it's not enough. Now, on they push towards the tower. Even through the Janna shield, they want to try and get there. Should be able to do it here. Now, Prophet, he's trying to hang tough, but he's running out of health for the time being, and it looks like Giants will be the ones to open up the base once again. Three games on this red side, and three games, they're looking good. At this point, Giants, they've been able to adapt. you got to wonder how well their coach, Andre the Giant, has been able to take them through this series. It was a 1-3-1 setup in the first two games. They fell to the mid lane pressure in from Nagne in game three, and they've been able to counter a lot of that as Giants just marching for a second inhibitor tower and looking for a second inhibitor through this Baron buff. And they push him catch on to EQ. Some defense here out of the Shen, but it doesn't matter. Box is already down. They've got the minions to work with. NIP can only fall back as their base is in ruins once again. Inhibitor gonna be fired down, and NIP might just have one last shot at redemption, but with three-man stun, I don't know if that's going to be enough. Mini true packs with a godlike kill. Shockwave whiffs, doesn't even matter. Nagne's on the wrong side of the fight. The double kill from Mini. He hops back in on the reset. The minions are pouring in, and a glacial prison doesn't mean a thing. This is going to be it. Down go the Nexus turrets, and down go the ninjas' hopes. They'll have to play in that loser's match. But for this team on the other side, they might be giants, and they are stomping the competition in the promotion tournament. Giants with a convincing win against NIP.
You look at these games like this where Giants get a lead, and as soon as they have a lead, they hold on and don't let it go. A couple of different play styles, but at the end of game four, 8-0-3 was exactly what Giants needed from Mini True Packs. The Tristana comes out, a good performance. They were able to punish in a lot of fights, and NIP just couldn't answer. I want to amend my earlier statement. Uh, he evolved all the way up to Mega True Packs. <laughs> uh, that guy was fed. Very impressive performance of the entire Giants squad, and I think you really hit it on the adaptability. We saw them play control game. We saw them play, you know, collapse and punish, and, and this team fight was so impressive. Yeah. Rarely do we see a well-coordinated challenger team on that level that also does not kind of fail at this big stage. And Giants Gaming, you know, I think Minnie in his interview the other week was right to say the LCS team should fear them. Yeah, it, it put one of them were fearing them, and now, unfortunately, for NIP, they don't have the opportunity. We'll see whether it is fear or Schalke null fear that is going to succeed next week as this Giants versus Schalke in a best of five. One team is going into the LCS for the 2018 spring split, but you can see how much it means to Giants to be one step away from making it back. For the Giants org, after having been relegated out of the LCS, to come back in, showcase such a strong performance. I don't know what can stop these guys. Maybe Schalke, but for the time being, <laughs> maybe the Schalke celebrate. tank. <laughs> I mean, that's going to be an excellent matchup. Uh, it will. A lot of history behind it, too, because remember, Giants is the only team they really lost to. But impressive all around. Multifaceted play, coordination, effective communication. I mean, those are all the hallmarks, hallmarks of successful teams. Yeah, a really impressive performance out of Giants overall. Over the course of four games, most points looked like the stronger team. I don't think that's unfair to say. NIP did answer back in game three. But unfortunately, 3-1 on the series means... Giants are going to advance to the winner's match. Yeah, we'll take a look at that updated bracket and see how the rest of it is all going to unfold. As you rightly mentioned, Shock and Ulfir versus Giants. The winner of that game will go straight to the LCS. However, Mysterious Monkeys in NIP, the loser, hops back down into the Challenger Series. And of course, with the things laid out the way they are, now we know there will definitely be a new team in the European LCS come spring. Guaranteed one old LCS team making it back. Giants, I hope you just heard the chant in the background. High morale for them. and. It's going to be a very exciting matchup. Mysterious Monkeys versus NIP did meet up once in the EU LCS Summer Split, and it was M MM that took that. We'll see whether that still holds true. These matches will take place next week for the promotion tournament. Yep, of course. Indeed, we'll see some interesting ones going through, and I feel like when desperation kind of comes out there, we'll see what happens, because MM, as you rightly said, they were able to take the win, but I think at the end of the split, NIP were the ones that were looking better, and I wonder who takes the loss harder. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I, I think the biggest takeaway from today, though, again, mini true packs and Jazuki looking good. Oh, man, you called him up. mega true packs, Giga, mega, mega evolution, giga evolution true packs. Maybe yeah. we'll see next week if he can come up with some true packs CMZ. We'll find out. <laughs> take it to the next level on top of that. But he is looking like a, a real machine, and I think true packs versus upset is a real cool matchup for next week's series. Definitely won't want to miss that one. Now, don't forget that the EULCS playoffs, they are just around the corner with Unicorns Love and Misfits Gaming kicking things off in the first quarterfinal tomorrow. So, of course, we want to see you guys tuning in for that one. And if you liked a lot of action, well, any game with the Unicorns is certainly going to be a lot of action. It's a Unicorn versus a former Unicorn once again for yeah, Misfits yeah. and the Unicorns of Love. It's been a, a rough split from two teams that were aiming to be towards that final. Of course, Unicorns in the spring finals, Misfits in the third place game. Now one of them cannot progress any further. Should be a very fun matchup. Yeah. I think the only uh, question that I, that's really still on my mind about that one, though, is is PoE going to build Harden Sensor Oriana? Or Nash's Tooth on everything. Oh, that's always going to happen. Mid lane matchup is going to be so key because Exile, he's kind of on the upswing a little bit, but Power of Evil has been a monster all the way through the split four Misfits, one of the real carries for that team. I wonder, I even think that could be a five game series. Oof. Well, bold prediction, but I think it's definitely going to be an exciting one. Now, it is time for us to call tonight from here in Berlin. So thank you for watching. We'll be back with more action in the promotion tournament in the next week. So we'll see you then. Is coming in. Oh, hang on, Robin turn around. Turn on Giants, another teleport coming in, but it's late. Jack Troll's going down for first blood. It goes the way of Sproddle. Let's go. No. Kill him, kill him. They are behind us, they are behind us. I would, I would, I would. Kill them, kill them. 
them all! Kill them all! Ganesh, Ganesh, Ganesh! Ruin trying to hold the line. Giants, they are not gonna fall here as Mini Troopax picks up the one kill, picks up the second, he queues down, that's a triple from Mini! No flash, no flash, no flash, no flash, no flash, no flash, no flash. It was a patient game from Giants, it was a collected game from Giants, and not without mistakes, but they find themselves up one on the series. To drag them back towards the team, he kills the EQ! And Shook just doesn't have any damage, so now Ruin's gonna tag his way in with the hammer shot. Jesus ah. <laughs> Nice! In the Giants, they are grinding NIP's bones to make their bread this game. Beer. Holy shit! Wow! Ker! It's going for a one-go from the Ker. Nice, good job. Nice, good job. Nice, good job. Nice, good job. Nice! And that is lights out! NIP are staying alive! I'm going deep, I'm going deep! Fuck them, fuck them. Lucian, Lucian, Lucian. Lucian, no flash, no flash. Okay, back off, back off, back off. No, 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 no. Oh, go, 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 go. Is that? Shadow, the 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 shadow,